non-payment of the head tax, the jizya, by a dhimmi made him liable to all the Islamic penalties for debtors who did not repay their creditors. The offender could be sold into slavery or even put to death. In addition, non-payment of the jizya by one or several dhimmis, especially if it was fraudulent, allowed the Muslim authority at its discretion to put an end to the autonomy of the com community to which the guilty party or parties belonged. Thus, from uh, one day to the next, all the Christians in a city could lose their status as a protected people through the fault of just one of them. Hmm. Everything could be called into question, including their personal liberty. Furthermore, non-payment of, of the legal tribute was not the only reason for abrogating the status of the people of the book. Another was, quote, public outrage against the Islamic faith. For example, leaving exposed for Muslims to see a cross or wine or even pigs. By converting to Islam, one would no longer have to be confined to a given district or be, the, or be the victim of discriminatory measures or suffer humiliations. Furthermore, the entire Islamic law tended to favor conversions. When an infidel became a Muslim, he immediately benefited from a complete amnesty for all of his earlier crimes, even if he had been sentenced to the death penalty, even if it was for having insulted the prophet or blasphemed against the word of God. His conversion acquitted him of all his faults, of all his previous sins. A legal opinion given by a mufti from Al-Andalus, Spain, in the ninth century is very instructive. A Christian dhimmi kidnapped and violated a Muslim woman. When he was arrested and condemned to death, he immediately converted to Islam. He was automatically pardoned while being constrained to marry the woman and to pro provide for her a dowry in keeping with her status. The mufti, who was consulted about the affair, perhaps by a brother of the woman, found that the court decision was perfectly legal, but specified that if the convert did not become a Muslim in good faith, and secretly remained a Christian, he should be flogged, slaughtered, and crucified. Hmm. And this is something that happened in the quote-unquote Andalusian utopia. Yes, yes. Uh, Muslim Spain really was a land of, of, of endless jihad. I mean, the, 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 the Christian population predominantly that was vanquished, uh, you know, fought back. Uh, so we have, we have, we have repeated in invasions uh, of, of, uh, of, of the Iberian Peninsula. We also have the Muslim state that was established there using it as a base to, 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 to uh, engage in razias, both on land and sea. Uh, throughout Europe, uh, is raids, raids, yes. pillaging in, in, into France, is into 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 what would now be modern day Switzerland, along along the the Mediterranean littoral. Uh, so this was uh, this was a, a typical uh, uh, jihadist state. As far as the, as far as the Jews go, um, we know um, uh, in 1066, uh, again, so 30 years before the Crusaders uh, rampaged through the Rhineland. The entire population of Jews uh, of, of Grenada uh, was subjected to a horrible pogrom where uh, uh, four to five thousand Jews were slaughtered, uh, and, it's, and, and th that, that one pogrom killed as many Jews as were killed in the Rhineland some thirty years later when the Crusaders were rampaging uh, uh, through the Rhineland. Mm -hmm. um, with the, with the uh, fanatical Islamized Berbers, uh, there was a wave of, of uh, uh, there were two waves of invasions actually, the Almoravids. Um, at the end of the 11th century uh, into the beginning of the 12th century uh, were then followed by, by the Almohads. The Almoravids particularly targeted the Christian populations. Hmm. Uh, they actually engaged in three massive deportations uh, of Christian populations from the late 11th to the er through the early 12th century, which decimated the Christian population under Muslim control hmm. in, in Spain. Um, and uh, uh, they were deported to North Africa. Uh, many of them died. Um, the the Almohads uh, were even more fanatic and 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 more violent. Uh, they they committed uh, uh, massive uh, 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 massive pillage and destruction in North Africa. Moved moved on to Spain. Um, uh, it, 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 it Rambam uh, Maimonides escaped escaped from the Almohads uh, from Cordova went to Fez disguised as a Muslim and then eventually made his way to Fatimid. The Egypt. Rambam is Maimonides, Maimonides, the great philosopher. Ma Maimonides, right? And Maimonides, you know, in his Epistle to the Jews of Yemen, uh, uh, you know, is quoted roughly paraphrasing that uh, the, the you know the 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 the, uh, the uh, experience under Ishmael under is, under Islam. Uh, was was the worst experience that the Jews had, the worst oppression that the Jews uh, uh, had had experienced. Hmm. In fact, the the Almohads engaged in in their own inquisition. Uh, Jews who had converted to Islam were not believed, uh, and uh, this is probably the prototype for the for the deportations and and um, inquisition that took place 
in, of in the European. It, it, yes, yes. Mm -hmm. And it, there's also a very interesting cycle of continuity. So you have the, the Almohad invasions uh, and depredations uh, displacing, killing and displacing massive numbers of Jews. They actually got, got um, uh, f uh, safety, found sanctuary in Christian controlled part of, of Spain, Aragon. Under, under Jaime I, for example, they were allowed to practice their religion. They were, to some extent, integrated into, into his kingdom. But of course, we know what happened 200 years, 250 years later, where there's a brutal uh, inquisition, uh, and, and the Jews are killed and forcibly converted and expelled, et cetera. Um, where do they wind up? Well, we hear about the Ottoman, the tolerant Ottoman Empire. Yes, it's very true. At that point, uh, around the time of Columbus, you know, the, the, mm -hmm. the Jews were granted sanctuary uh, in the Ottoman Empire. But it turns out the regions that they were they were uh, repopulating had been regions of Byzantine Jewry that were that were uh, conquered in the Ottoman Jihad conquests around Salonika, for example, in 1430, where the Jewish community was destroyed there, even mm. taken into the Ottoman uh, enslavement system of uh, 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 the enslavement of, of non-Muslim children, the Deb uh, There are there are chronicles of of Jew Byzantine Jews complaining bitterly about the yoke of the Ottomans in the in this mm. period of conquest. So. In a sense, we see these historical movements. Uh, they're they're not, um, you know, it's not it's not an image of of, of always intolerant uh, Christianity and tolerant Islam, mm -hmm. or or vice mm -hmm. or vice versa. Right. Um, but we do have to see these things more more in in oh, continuity. That's what we want to do. And uh, people might say that well, that you know, that was history. That was some time ago, and and uh, you know, Islam is better today. But uh, what's happening in the Sudan today? Uh, this, the Sudan is is uh, is an example of a system that unfortunately has has been in place uh, and part and parcel of jihad uh, for since its beginning. Uh, massive enslavement has always been a concomitant uh, of jihad. Again, as, as today I'm, slavery. Uh, yes, yes, but but historically in the Sudan. Um, th one of the major sources of slaves for, for the Islamic empires, particularly for the Arabs, has been has been African uh, African populations that were raided by by uh, Arab Muslims uh, for centuries. So we're talking about Arab Muslims enslaving black Muslims, uh, enslaving black Christians and animists. And now what we see in Darfur is sort of the the African animist slash Muslim populations okay. being uh, 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 suffering similar depredations. But if we go back to the to the more recent wave of jihad, say beginning in the early 1980s. The initial target of, of these raids, the, these were razias. These were like modern razias. 1980s. Uh, 1980s were were the were the Christian and animist populations uh, in in the southern Sudan. The uh, uh, jihad was declared against them. Uh, they were they were licit. They they were they were as if the going back to the same sort of historical populations. They were part of the Dar al Harb that I described uh, earlier. Uh, and it was perfectly licit to to uh, to enslave them, to slaughter them. Dar al Harb um, means that they are residing in an area which is warfare is permitted. That's right. That's right. They're outside. They're outside the actual jurisdiction of the Sharia. It has not been imposed uh, uh, on them. They have not accepted it, and therefore their lives and possessions uh, are licit. It has to be conquered. Yes. 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 So so we see a reactivation of the of the jihad in the Sudan. Um, but actually, Churchill, uh, when he was fighting the modest jihad, uh, mm -hmm. the, the Mahdi, uh, remember the movie Khartoum uh, mm -hmm. with Charlton Heston, um, Churchill described the situation as being very similar uh, back in the late, uh, he, he actually wrote about this in 1899. Mm -hmm. But the modest jihad was also accompanied by massive enslavement of, uh, of, of uh, African animist uh, populations. So what kind, how many slaves are there in Sudan at this moment? Well, I, there, there's there, the the figures are are hard to come by, but it's but it but the the estimates from the wave of of, uh, of enslavement that that involved primarily the Christian and animist populations in the south were were tens of thousands. There were also uh, a few million, I believe, that were displaced, and a couple of million killed uh, uh, during these during these uh, during this uh, uh, jihad. 